family has been very close to us. Joe Dawson Engel and his wife, we had the joy of working with them for 26 years. They have been our mentors. I learned a lot from him. He invested in me a lot. Whenever we travel together, Dawson Engel used to tell me, Tilak, I want to pass it on to you. When I hear that phrase, and I ask, Lord, what is next? And I thank the Lord for the Dawson family. He's not feeling that great these days. We need to pray for him. Two weeks ago, when I visited, he said, Tilak, sit down three more minutes. So I just sat there, and we had a wonderful time. What I have in mind to share my testimony, then the work of the Lord in Haryana, then a message from God's word the, the Lord laid on my heart. And I will be finishing all this in this given time. I would request your undivided attention. My name is Tilak Papu. We live in Gurgaon. My wife is here, Lini, sitting the friend. We have four children, 30, 28 got married. Then 26, Sabina, our daughter. Then our son, 24, he will be getting married in August. They all are in the US. They born there but they grew up in Gurugaon and they went back to US to study and to work and to live. I was born and grew up in a Hindu home. I never wanted to become a Christian. Carrying this black Bible, this was the least things in my life. But Bible talks about God is putting eternity in man's heart. I sensed that long time ago. And I kept on asking so many questions to my father, who was a communist man. We never had any religious activities in our home. We were eight children, and I was the youngest one. So I kept on asking my dad, Dad, where is God? Where is heaven? Where is hell? And he just laughed at me, and he said, Son, there is no God. I kept on asking so many questions. So finally, he took me to a Hindu monastery in Kerala. And I grew up with Swami Sri Jubananda Guru for many years. Finally, I became a choir conductor there, conducting songs. I cannot tell you, because there is no time to explain what all went on. But when I was 17, I left Kerala and I went to Bihar, North India, to, look, uh, to find a job to join with my two brothers. So when I reached Bihar, Bukharo, I lost my guru. Then I asked people around, is there any religious group of people they, they seek God? And somebody told me about the Satya Sai Baba's cult. And I joined with them. And I enjoyed conducting bhajans all night throughout the day. That's, they are a very well organized group. Life went on, then I joined with um, the Ayappa Temple in Bukaro, Bihar. I used to conduct bhajans, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Religiously, everything was going very well, but there was a real longing and emptiness to know the Lord. One day, my sister was 18, and I was 17, I was in Bihar. She got up and she went to the pond near our home. When she was taking a bath, she had fits, epilepsy. And she died right there. I got the news after four days. When I heard that news, I was totally devastated. She was my best friend. And I asked these four questions. What is life all about? Where is my sister? Why am I born here? And where am I going? I wrote it down in a sheet of paper. I went back to Kerala and asked my guru, tell me, 
answer me all the questions. And he said, Tilak, we are human beings, we are born here, and we will die. That's the end of our life. But I was not that happy. Again, came back to Bihar and conducted the music, and I was working. But I really enjoyed the religious activities. And I felt like, like a Jonah, very restless. I want to run away from Bihar. At that time, my sister was a believer, and she got a job in, in Delhi, in Mulchand Hospital. This was in 1982. She said, why don't you come to um, New Delhi to drop me? And I said, sure. So I joined with her, and I reached New Delhi. As soon as I reached, I found out the Ayapa Temple in Arkepuram. And I went there, and I told them who I am and what I can do. They were so happy. I used to conduct bhajans Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I had one room rented in, Ar um, in Mayapuri. I was working at the airport with a contractor. But that one room was dedicated to all the gods. I had the pictures and everything. And burning incense, praying, Lord, who are you? Where are you? And I was getting tired of worshipping idols. Nobody forced me. When I was thinking, there must be somebody who is seeking the Lord. My sister came to my room one day, and I asked her, do you know any religious people? They are seeking God. They don't worship idols. She said, yes. Why don't you come and join with our prayer meeting? So this was in 1982, December 31st night. The watch night service was conducted by Delhi Brethren Assembly. So I went with my sister. That was the first time I got introduced to a Christian crowd. There were 20 people sitting in the room and thanking the Lord, praising the Lord. And I looked around the wall. There is no idols. As soon as I entered into the room, the Spirit of God really arrested me with a deep conviction. These people have something which I do not have. The joy and the peace of God was so much evident. Next day was a Sunday. They invited me to the church. First time in a church service. And I was hungry in the morning, so I saw... The bread was coming, the communion bread, big bread. In temple, we, when we go, we get prasad. And I thought it must be a prasad. So when the bread came in front of me, and I had a big grab, and I just ate. Then I was thinking, it would be good if I get some water. So I saw somebody is bringing a cup. So when the cup reached in front of me, I was about to grab. Somebody grabbed my hand and said no. Later they explained. After the church service, they took me to somebody's house for a lunch. When they were, we were having lunch, they shared the gospel with me. When they explained the cross of Christ, who died on the cross for my sins, that made perfect sense to me. And they said, Tilak, if you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he can fill your heart with joy, peace, and purpose. And he can forgive your sins. Would you like to have that? I said, sure. And they said, okay, kneel down and pray this prayer. So I knelt down and I prayed that sinner's prayer. And I thought something, miracle may happen, but nothing happened. There were four brothers who were sitting there. They shared the gospel with me. And they said, why don't we pray for Tilak? When one man was praying, and I was experiencing like somebody was lifting a heavy burden from me. When the second person was praying, the same thing. When the third person was praying, the same experience. When the fourth person prayed, and I felt somebody just lifted the heavy burden from me. Somebody just set me free, and the peace of God just descended upon me. This happened 34 years ago. Feel like this happened only yesterday. 
I have a brother, his name is Pushpan Papu. He was the first believer in our home, and he got kicked out when I was four years old because of our parents. They are very religious, my mother and all my uncles. They all got together, and they gave him an ultimatum that you can stay with us and follow the tradition, or you can go with Jesus. And he came to know the Lord through OM, Operation Mobilization. So now this brother is in England. He is studying in a Bible college. As soon as I became a believer, I started to read the Bible. And I experienced true transformation in my life. Two, number one is that I have a conscience if I do something wrong that really starts bothering me. I cannot sleep. The second thing I noticed was that my vocabulary has changed. I used to curse in Hindi every other word. The Lord just cleansed my mouth. I cannot believe myself. When I started to read God's word, the Lord started filling my emptiness. For four months, I did not go to church. I went to Ayappa Temple in Arkepuram. After four months, I realized that four months ago, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. He is transforming my life. We are from a business background, so when I read God's word, and I, I found a lot of business principles, and I said, this is great. My brother is in, 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 uh, in U.S. at that time. He was a seminary student. I wrote to him, Pushpan, that this is what happening to my life. I became a believer, got baptized, growing in the Lord. I'm reading God's word. But I want to go to a Christian college. I want to study business and the Bible. And he said, well, if that is the case, I can help you. Why don't you come to U.S. and to study MBA and become a businessman? So in 1986, in the summer, I got a visa to go to U.S. And I just came out after receiving the visa from the American embassy. And I said, India, you will never see me again. Never say never to the Lord. And I reached California in a university of Fresno Pacific College. Some American people came to my life. They started discipling me. And they saw something in my life. They said, Tilak, there is a conference going to take place in Chicago known as Urbana Conference. Why don't you go there? So I went there where I surrendered my life to the Lord. I was 25. And I said, Lord, take my life. From there, I changed my major, went to California San Jose Bible College, got married in New York. Then I went to seminary in Columbia, South Carolina, 1996. With a one-way ticket, we came back, came back to New Delhi to serve the Lord. And last year, I graduated with, with my doctorate. I did a research on backdoor exit among the Hindu converts of North India. Last 26 years, it has been a wonderful journey serving the Lord in Gurgaon. I love Haryana and the Haryanvi people. We have 0.08 percent Christians. By the grace of God, we were able to start three churches, small in number, among the Jad Gujar Yadav. We have a clinic and a school. And I was so encouraged to see the school you are a part of for the underprivileged children. The Lord is doing great work. We have seen Haryanvi is turning to the Lord. Last week, Saxena family invited us because the daughter-in-law was in the hospital. I went and I prayed. Now she came back. They were so happy that we visited. And he put a shawl around me and gave me a gift and said, thank you for coming and thank you for praying for my daughter-in-law. 